Hey guys, it's Fonzie with DipYourCar.com and we have a totally outside of the box video for you guys today. Today I'm actually going to show you how to ceramic coat a dipped car. One of the biggest gripes that people have had for years now is that they can't take advantage of the benefits of a ceramic coating on dipped cars. And now that Dip Armor is out, that all changes. So today I'm going to talk to you about how to prep the vehicle, what materials we're going to use for this project, how to actually apply the ceramic coating, and show you a side-by-side -side demonstrating the benefits of why you may want to have a ceramic coating on your dipped car. Very interesting video. Enjoy. Now first let's discuss the benefits of a ceramic coating and why you may want to spend your time and money putting a ceramic coating on your dipped car. Well, you're going to have people out there that are drawn to benefits like even further UV resistance, even further scratch protection, even more enhanced chemical resistance, and you're even going to get a little bit of depth and extra shine out of the ceramic. But most people are going to gravitate towards the ceramic because it makes your car ridiculously easy to keep clean. Water is just going to bead and fall off of it. Dirt is not going to cling to it. Stains are not going to cling to it. Washing it becomes hilariously simple. And I'm gonna show you guys a demonstration at the end of the video to show you what a dip armored surface with ceramic coating versus without ceramic coating looks like. But most people, including myself, are gonna use the ceramic coating because of how simple it's gonna to be to keep your dipped car looking absolutely perfect. Now, let's discuss the process and the materials that we're gonna use for the actual installation. Now I'm gonna walk you through all the materials that we have here set aside to actually do the ceramic coating installation. So what we have first and foremost is the Dip Armor Ceramic Coating Kit. And what comes in that kit are these materials right here. We have the actual Dip Armor Ceramic Coating itself, 30 milliliters. We have a couple little micro suede uh, applicators here. We have a foam applicator pad. And we have a nice microfiber towel. Now over here we have some extra microfiber towels that we're not going to use for the ceramic coating application, but actually the wipe down first. We have a bottle here of 50% isopropyl alcohol and 50% water, and we'll talk through that a little bit more in a second. And then we have some blue painter's tape. These are all the materials that we're going to be using to do the installation. And if you have some of these things at home, like the painter's tape or the alcohol, great. If not, you can find everything you see here at Dip Your Car. Now the question, is your dipped vehicle a candidate to use DYC's ceramic coating on top? Well, the first piece of criteria that needs to be met, obviously, is your dipped car has to have Dip Armor Advanced Top Coat on it. The Dip Armor is what makes ceramic coating a dipped car possible. So you cannot ceramic coat a dipped car unless it has Dip Armor Advanced Top Coat on it. Now the second piece of criteria, is your Dip Armor at least 30 days old. You're not going to use a ceramic coating or anything that seals anything in unless your dip armor is at least 30 days old. So from the time that you sprayed it, wait 30 days and then you're free to use the DYC ceramic coating. Pretty simple, but make sure your vehicle fits that criteria before you move forward. Now we're going to move on to the prep process. The first thing you're going to do to your dipped car to get it ready is give it a thorough wash from head to toe. You're gonna wash it very, very carefully. Make sure you don't miss any spots. You gotta get any dirt, grime, grease, any surface contaminants that are on that dipped car off so it's nice and clean. DYC's dip wash, something like that, a simple, straightforward wash is perfect for this process. Don't use any crazy washes that have waxes or sealants in them. You wanna use something very simple and straightforward. After you give it a full, thorough wash, the next thing you're gonna do is dry the vehicle. You need this vehicle to be dry to the bone before you move forward to the next step. So, full, thorough wash from head to toe, then fully, completely dry the vehicle. Then we're gonna move on to the wipe down. What we're gonna use for the wipe down on the surface is a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. Now, you may have heard in other videos that Dip Armor doesn't get along well with isopropyl alcohol, and that's true. But at a 50% reduction with water, a quick wipe down is perfectly fine. Now, quick note, DYC does sell isopropyl alcohol on our website, but it's 99% strength. Do not use that full strength on your dip armor. Please make sure you reduce it 50% with water before you move forward. So what we're going to do is focus on one panel at a time, and we're going to wipe down each panel with the alcohol and water mixture. 
So you'll see that we have some blue masking tape as well. Now, when you ceramic coat a car, some people will prefer to mask off some trim in some areas, and you'll see that some people won't. It really does come down to how careful you're going to be. Something like this black rubber trim, we're actually not going to ceramic coat that. We're gonna just keep the ceramic coating on the dip armor itself, on the body panels of the car. So if you're gonna be super careful, you can elect to not mask those area off, but we're going to suggest that you do. It doesn't take much time. It's not like you have to mask the entire vehicle for it to be sprayed. What we're gonna do is just look for areas like this trim that are right up against the edge of our dip armor. And we're just going to put some masking tape along that edge, just so that when we're actually applying the ceramic coating, we don't have to worry so much about riding up onto that trim. So we finished masking up the couple areas that we wanted to mask, and I'll show you what we did here. We just masked up the bottom edge of the window trim here, and we didn't do the top because there's a really nice gap up here and we shouldn't have trouble avoiding an overlap there. On the hood, we have a little bit of trim here with kind of a close gap, so we masked off that edge. We got the front grills here just to be extra careful. And again, the bottom window trim here, nothing in the back. So again, masking isn't critical, but if you're trying to be a little bit extra careful just to make sure everything goes to plan, it doesn't hurt to spend 10 minutes masking off some of the close areas. So now we've got it prepped, we've got it masked. Let me show you exactly how we're going to apply the ceramic. So now we're going to apply the ceramic coating. What you're gonna do is focus on one panel at a time. For example, we're gonna focus first on this door. But for larger surface areas like this door or the hood or a roof, you're actually gonna further break it down into small sections. What I'm gonna do is split this door into two. I'm gonna focus on the left side first, then move over to the right side. And the materials that I have here is obviously the bottle of the ceramic coating itself. We have the microfiber from the inside of the kit. We have the foam applicator pad and the micro suede applicator. And what we're gonna do is wrap the micro suede applicator around the foam pad. So we've got an overlap in the back here that we're gonna keep down and you got a nice consistent surface area. And what we're gonna do is again, focus on the left side, then on the right side. Now what you wanna do is apply the material to the micro suede applicator, just create a nice wet line in the middle. Now when you just start using the applicator, it's gonna take a little bit more product to actually wet that surface out. So a little extra in the beginning, and then as you go, it'll be a little bit more saturated. Now what we're gonna do is focus on a cross hatching pattern. We're gonna go left to right first all the way down, then focus on an up and down. Don't worry about it looking perfect on your first couple passes, because as we do the cross hatching, it'll fill itself in. So we're using light pressure, not a lot of pressure, just going one pass at a time with a nice little overlap. Make sure that you're treating the entire surface. If it starts to dry out a little bit on the pad and that'll do, it'll do that in the beginning, just add a little bit more and then just keep on moving. Make sure you go edge to edge and after you go left to right, we're gonna go up and down. Now, if you have a little bit of a break here, like some trim, you can go up and down along here. And then we can get that trim. And then we can do up and down under the trim. Just make sure you're nice and thorough. And when you're done treating the panel edge to edge, you're gonna let it flash out for about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, you're gonna take the microfiber that came in the kit, just gonna use light pressure, just the weight of the towel, and we're just gonna buff off the excess. Don't push too hard just light pressure. Now this side of the door is treated. Obviously you can see a line here, this is where we treated it and this is where we didn't. So what we're gonna do is focus on the right side of the door now. Now same process, but the only thing you're gonna pay attention to here is making sure that we overlap a little bit onto the side that we already treated. You don't wanna stop early, you'll have a dry line with no product there. So we're gonna re-wet the applicator. Same process, but see I'm gonna overlap onto the side that I already treated. Same 
side to side first. Then we're going to go up and down. trim. Try and get in and around any nooks or crannies the best that you can. Now we're going to let that flash out for 30 seconds again. Now we're going to come back in with the microfiber and again light pressure. We're going to not only take off the excess but help blend it all in. And you can see as we go there's actually no difference between the first side that we treated and the second. It blended in really nice. Now we're going to focus on one paddle at a time and treat the entire car. All right, guys, we went panel to panel and we finished ceramic coating the entire M3. And it looks pretty awesome. Now, you are going to pick up some sheen. You are going to pick up a little bit of depth, but I don't want to over push that or oversell that piece of it. This is not really a cosmetic product. I don't want to tell you it's going to look completely different. It does look a little different, especially if you look at it side by side with a non-treated panel, but this product is more about the benefits. And I know you guys want to see those benefits in action. So it's time to have a little bit of fun. All right, guys, we brought the video outside because we have a game to play together. Behind me here, we have a test hood. And on this test hood, the entire thing is coated with white Plasti Dip spray. And then the entire thing is coated with Dip Armor Advanced Top Coat. But Gabe over here has coated one of the two sides with the Dip Armor Ceramic Coating. And I don't know which one it is. I tried to kind of cheat and see if I can tell based on feel, but I wasn't able to. Now we're gonna pour different things on the surface of the hood on both sides. And based on the behavior, you and I are gonna see if we can decide which side has the ceramic coating and which one doesn't. Now, this is not gonna be super easy. It's not gonna be night and day because Dip Armor already has some hydrophobic properties. It already does a really good job of keeping the surface clean, but we're gonna keep a close eye on it and I think we're gonna be able to pull this off. Let's get started. So we're gonna try the right side first and what we're gonna do is pour some colored water on kind of slowly at first and see how the drizzle effect impacts the surface. Pretty good. Some of it clung on there pretty tight. Let's check the other side. All right, now same thing on the left side. See how the blue water does low flow. I don't know. I don't know, that one's not really clinging at all. Now we're gonna kick it up a notch a little bit. We're gonna increase the flow. We're really gonna dump some red water on there and see if we can get it to cling. All right, I mean, it sheets it off pretty good. Some of it's hanging behind. Let's check the other side. All right, same thing on the left side, just dump it on pretty heavy. kind of a close one. I don't know. All right, let's kick it up a notch. All right, guys, we got one more test. We got a bucket full of mud here. We're just going to dump it onto the entire hood and see if there's a difference in how the two sides react. One, two, All right. If I had to guess, just based on this test alone, I would definitely say that this side is clearly holding on to the mud longer than this side. Let's just tilt it up real quick. 
let it sit. Now remember, all of this is just plastic. None of this is coated at all. Now I think at this point it's kind of a no-brainer. The right side is holding on to way more material. The left side, although it's obviously not going to be perfect, is much cleaner. I'm going to go left side ceramic coating, right side dip armor on its own. Now again, the dip armor did hold its own through the test. I mean, this is a bucket of mud. I'm not sure what you can expect, but this side is far, far cleaner. You can even see a very distinct line right down the middle to where the mud would hold on this side and not so much on this side. Now we've removed the plastic and we're cleaning it up and this is the side with the ceramic coating and as you can tell, it doesn't have any impact at all on how the dip and the dip armor peel. It peels off perfectly fine. It sits nicely on top of the dip armor and just helps keep it clean and protected. Very sweet. Now this video was a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys understand the benefits of having a ceramic coating on your dipped car. Now a couple of things that we have to cover. When we were developing dip armor, we tested a couple of the ceramic coatings that were out there right now and we ran into some problems. So we teamed up with one of the industry leaders in ceramic coatings and we designed this specific ceramic coating for dip armor from the ground up. It's made for dip armor. We know exactly how it's gonna perform and behave and it's proven safe to work. I know there are a lot of ceramic coating brands out there and you may wanna ask, hey, is this one gonna work with dip armor? Is this one gonna work? It's impossible for me to know which ones are gonna work and which ones are gonna fail. So if you wanna experiment with other ceramic coating brands outside of the one that we made for dip armor, you can do that at your own risk but we have one here, it's made specifically for this application, it's fairly priced and it's proven to work. Also, this project does take some time. So if you're going to do it and you're gonna do it right, allocate several hours for the project because if you go panel by panel, it does take some time and you wanna make sure you're not rushed with the project. But lastly, if you put too much ceramic coat on a panel, you can end up with some streaks. So if you see some streaks or a little bit of, of kind of like a, an inconsistent finish, it's probably because you put too much on there. Just give it a little bit of extra buffing and it should even itself out. Now, if you want to get the ceramic coating kit that we use in this video for Dip Armor, click right up here. It'll bring you to the DYC ceramic coating kit. If you have any questions about this process or anything dipping related, you know how to get in touch with us. Chat with us directly on dipyourcar.com or call in. We love to talk to you guys about all the different projects that you're working on. It's Fonzie. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. I will see you on the next video.